the word of God and get them out. Amen. They're not a true friend. These were true friends. These were true friends. Can I get amen? Amen. True friends. True friends. True friends. True friends. You know, I don't have many preacher friends. I came here, and I'm not saying that all, and they called the house, and they were going down to that place where you go jam. What's that place? Lansing? Well, I ain't never been down in Lansing. I didn't even know what they did down in Lansing. God, I didn't know. I'm from the country. I'm a hillbilly. I didn't know what they did down there. And they said, don't you want to go get some wedding together? And I didn't know. But when I found out, they ain't my friend. I don't want that kind of friend. I don't want those kind of friends. So when the Lord come, I'm down there playing. Whatever they do down there. I don't know what they do down there. True friends will always encourage you to obey the word of God. And I, I repeat it to these young folks. If the person that's in your life is not encouraging you to walk in holiness and sanctification, you're dealing with the devil. Amen. You are dealing with the devil. The devil transforms himself into an angel of light and quotes scripture. Yes. But he gets you in a weak moment yes. and he'll tear you down. Yes. He'll destroy your holiness. He'll destroy your sanctification. And your life is not going to come to full fruition. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. True friends. True friends. True friends. Let me, I got another for you. I got another phone. I, I, I can't sit down. Can, can I just stay up a little more? Yeah. When you obey God's word, because he, he finally went down there. Jordan represents death. You know what I mean? So when you go down into the Jordan, when you went through the Red Sea, you have life. It's a picture. It's a picture of getting saved. It's a picture of getting saved. But 40 years later, they crossed the Jordan River. You're coming in into the abundant life. You see, when they, when they crossed the Jordan River, they entered into the Canaan land. It was to the abundant life. There were cities already built. There were houses already up there. All they had to do is go in and possess their possessions. They entered into the abundant life. So finally, the brother obeyed God. The general, I, I guess he kept his uniform on. But thank God he did go out into the river of death. Muddy, dirty. Mm. And he went on down and he dipped seven times in the muddy Jordan River. I can just see him there. I can see him going down, mad with his mad self. But he obeyed. Amen. Amen. He obeyed God. And when he came up the seventh time, his skin looked like the skin of a baby. Because he obeyed God's word. Amen. I want you to look then in verse 11. Then I want you to look at verse 15. I want you first to look at verse 11. Before you obey the word of God, before, verse 11, he said, Behold, I thought. He said, Behold, I thought. But after he had dipped seven times in Muddy Jordan, he said, Behold, now I know. Amen. Amen. What happened? God put his divine assurance in that man's heart. Because when he, you obey God, he will put his assurance 
in your heart and let you know that I'm pleased with your life. Amen. You know that 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 God is going to make a way. Amen. It's an assurance. Amen. It was an assurance. It's an assurance. He didn't have it until he obeyed God. After he obeyed God. After, I guess there was shouting out on that woman. On that shore. You see, my father was a gambler. And every time, every preacher, chicken eating preacher that came in the community. My father was a gambler. My mother went to church. They brought him to our house. And we fed those chicken eaters. They came up. My father was a gambler. And he did some other things. And he prayed them home. But they baptized my father in February. They took an axe when he gave his life to God. In February 15th, I think the 15th of February, and, and I watched them a little boy, and they broke the ice. They broke the ice. And he took Archie Reeves and my aunt, Aunt Emma, down into the water. It was February. And dipped him up under the ice wall. When they brought Archie Reeves up, he was shouting like this. He shouted and shouted, and he ain't got sick yet. He ain't got sick yet. It was for real. You see, my father could have dreams. And in his dream, he could dream about a number. I never played numbers. And they would hit every time. But when my father got saved, the people would come to the house and, and they would bring money and say, Mr. Reed, go ahead, give me the number. He said, no, I'm a changed man. Amen. And we suffered in time. But he was changed. God put something in his heart. Amen. That divine assurance, that's what he put in this man's heart. He'll put it in your heart. Yes. If you will obey God, yes. he'll put it in your heart. Yes. There'll be a joy in your life. Amen. Hallelujah! When you're obedient, God will put his joy in your life. Yes. Amen. People be sad around you, but not you. Amen. There'll be a joy. Amen. There'll be a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. They don't know why you're so happy. God is pleased with your life. Amen. And you don't have to worry about your tomorrow. Because God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. I'm going to give you a good end. You got a beautiful future when you yeah. obey God's word. Yeah. Yeah. The man that God wants you to marry, he'll come from nowhere. You don't have to get to shop around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Western stuff. That ain't scripture. You don't find where Adam ever shopped around. Yeah. He didn't do it. God laid him down and put to sleep and took a rib from him and built this woman and when he woke up, there she stood over him. God did this. I, I see people doing it. I ain't against all that. But when I got ready to get married, I got out on my knees on Tuesday. And I asked the Spirit said, go in the kitchen and pray. And I got out on my knees on Tuesday and on Friday. I met my wife and we stayed together 49 years. Amen. She put something in. He can do it. God can do it. Amen. I don't worry about my tomorrow. I know that I know that I know that I know I'm in the will of God. Amen. I'm in the will of God. I'm hoping in God's will. And you know people are all upset. And it's my job to pray that the Obama program will work. Because those people are killing you. They don't care. I know you Republicans are upset with me. But them people don't care. But I know who's going to take care of me. God has never failed. 
Stand on your feet. Father, we just give you thanks to God. That obedience to your word brings blessing. Father, we want to obey you in that. Put it in our hearts. The young people that have heard my voice today. There are young people here, Father. Put it in their hearts to obey you this day. Not tomorrow. This day. Father, make them sanctified. Let them live pure lives. Oh God, we just praise you. Father, we worship you. That these few words that I've spoken, they will not go out in vain. Let somebody believe your word. Yes. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Now keep our young women pure. Yes. Yes, Lord. Keep our young men pure. Yes. Until you set somebody in their lives. Yes. Let them get themselves ready. Because yes. God, you're able. Yes. God, you're able. Yes. And we thank you today. And we praise you in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you